you mentioned the beta alanine. I want to get to that in a minute. But um, before, because we're kind of talking about performance enhancement, there's this whole category of these blood flow enhancers. Oh, yeah. Boy, yeah. And there's like, so the beetroot juice, beetroot extract, and then there's yeah. the citrulline, arginine. Yeah. Um, so I'd heard of the beetroot juice and, and you know, the, these nitric oxide boosters, but the, the citrulline and arginine are something that I haven't really... I mean, arginine I know about for, for blood pressure, but sure. not for this performance enhancement. And oh. So I'm wondering, um, endurance type of exercise or high rep type of exercise, I mean, is this something that actually can make a difference in someone that's already well-trained? Is it like not well-trained people? How much? Yeah. Talk about what it's doing. Sure. There's actually a lot of research, right? A- Andy Jones uh, has done so much stuff here. Um, he's done a ton of work. On it. And there's a lot, like you're talking about a solid decade or more in lots of populations, lots of different stuff. So it is really well studied. It's funny you bring it up because it, it gets no love. Like people don't talk about it that much, despite it's not a small amount of research here. If you want to especially stack up like rhodiola to be like, you have a mountain to go on with beetroot juice and you have a pebble like on rhodiola. We like it. We use it a lot. We use, I've used a ton of different forms over the years. It's great because it is not a stimulant. So you can take it in the evenings and it doesn't compromise sleep at all. We will all use it a lot for our individuals who are either exercising at night or training multiple times per day and their stimulants come in the morning, but they still have high fatigue. And so they want to use it in the evening. So that is our, our common use case. You see it a lot in the endurance world particularly the steady state endurance world. So cycling, swimming, running, things like that. Um, You're talking about nitric oxide. This is a vasodilator. You're going to open up blood flow. You will feel it. If I were to put you in that blind test right now and I gave you any of those forms you mentioned, you will be like, whoa, something just happened. There's no blinding to those studies. But it sounds like if it's increasing blood flow, it should make make you cognitively more sharp as well. It will. Yeah, you you. I don't like. Now we're talking beetroot juice, or we're talking citrulline and arginine. You're gonna you're gonna have the same answer for basically all the above. Okay. There there will be noticeable effects. There are differences between all three of those. If you were to take literally beetroot juice and concentrate it into like a three ounce shot, you could see the same stuff here. Most of the time with like citrulline and arginine, though, you're getting really high concentrations. I don't know typical dosage of those off the top of my head to be honest, um, but what you're gonna normally see there is a very pronounced stimulant effect. Like it's not going to be caffeine, but you're going to be like, whoop, especially citrulline. Like you're going to see that right now. Um, You will see if you go to the gym and you take any of those forms, particularly like the arginines have fallen out of favor. Like they're not as popular anymore for a host of reasons. Um, But even all the beetroot stuff, like you will see a pump, a physical pump. Mm -hmm. Like you will see. I was reading about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's not a, that's not fake at all. What what's better, beetroot juice or beetroot extract? I mean, I typically go for the low sugar. Yep, which would be the extract. Yep, but um, does you, it matter? Um, hmm, does it matter? We use extract more. You could make a compelling argument though that juice is better. You could do that. So it kind of depends on multiple parts of that equation. We use the powder though for a bunch of different reasons. A lot of them are practical. A lot of them are travel related, right? You you don't want to take a whole bunch of juice with you in your airplane and you're flying all around to different places and you're just like, all right, I can take the powdered supplement. It lasts longer, shelf stable. Um, if we're talking about like antioxidant polyphenol properties, well, we know we're losing them, the powder. Like we're probably losing some of that relative to the juice. Okay. But then we're going to backfill that with whole foods and other things there. So um, lots of research on both of those. I would say a lot of people would say would prefer juice. I would say, is, I think is a fair thing to say, but uh, I'm not fully against powders. Well, if you're going for the powder, um, what kind of dose can you, do you have to take it how, how soon before exercise? Yeah. Can you take it chronically? Is it going to stop working? Can I start taking it before my podcast? I mean, like, how does this you, work? <laughs> you, you can, if you put a scoop in there right now, you would, uh, you would know that you did it. There's no question. So you can take it, um, you're talking about, I don't know, five minutes to take effect. Like it happens fast. Like really, like like caffeine, like you're going to have a pretty acute effect of it. And it will last, I think you can think of it like caffeine. It will last probably three hours-ish. Mm. Some people are going to metabolize it faster. Some people are slower. So it is not a, 
it's not a short lasting thing. It'll be there for quite some time. Um, so if you're going to use it for performance benefits, whether that's in the podcast room or in the weight room or dealing with the assembly at your kid's school or whatever thing you got to get through, uh, yeah, right before would be the time to go about it. Um, we will sometimes use it hours before exercise when we have, uh, high fatigue, high, like motivation issues. Right. So you're like, you start having these associations. Like, uh, let's say for example, we have somebody training at like four o'clock in the afternoon and at two o'clock, this is when we start having problems with like, am I going to train today? Am I not? Or whatever. All right, let's give them a little hit right there. And we don't want to go to caffeine. We don't want to go to other stimulants like that. So we'll simply use it as like an afternoon pick me up, if you will, for even on a non-exercising day. If, if we're trying, especially if we're trying to get caffeine out of somebody's equation or, or lower it in the amount in the afternoon. So we use it then as just simply like a, okay, motivation's back up. I'm feeling good again. And, I, and I'm ready to go. You'll feel it. Can you use it with caffeine? In other words, yep. like, okay. So there's yeah. no, what are the downsides? Do you, I mean, it affects blood pressure, presumably, right? I think I remember reading studies about that years ago on at least beetroot. This is nitric oxide, right? Right. So this is your primary health concern is going to be anything related to blood pressure, right? So you handle those equations. Our downside, GI. Like GI distress is going to 100% be there. Um, with with beetroot or with citrulline? All the above, particularly of- the beetroot. So right? oh, the juice okay. there. If you eat beets and you forget and then you go to the bathroom, like, so like that's the part of you're like, oh, you like you can freak, people can freak out and they forget that they took it or they don't know why. So you, you can have things like that. But as long as they're not GI issues, um, very minimal concerns outside of if you have, again, medical conditions that you got to pay attention. Do you have a preference to citrulline versus beetroot? We uh, Beetroot. Why? Yeah, generally we're going to be there. The issues, we, uh, issues is a strong word. The slight things we've had to consider with citrulline is power. Like it's just too powerful for some people. They're just way like, whoa, like this is too much for me. I don't like it. Um, I don't feel it. So you can titrate those dosages down. Um, the other, again, issue is the wrong word. Issue is too strong. But the other like little bit of like, eh, we've had is, why can't I just get this out of close something closer to whole food? Okay. So if that is your preference, then we can go back up a little bit to beet or beetroot juice. Um, but that's not a strong argument. Yeah. Yes. What about just baking some beets? Would you get a similar effect or would it not be concentrated enough? Uh, probably like 15 years ago. I had a friend who, you know, actually you met before who did this and he would blend beets like in a blender in a smoothie or something or like you could call it a smoothie, but he would like juice it and blend it and he would do a combination. It was probably like eight to 10 whole beets he would consume pre-workout. And he did it about three times, I think. And two of the three times he just threw up everywhere. (laughs) And then he's like red, but you can, it's a dosage issue though. Like, right. Will you get a small benefit? Um, I can't, like, I've never personally felt like a blood flow benefit from eating a bunch of beets. Personally, some people say that they do, um, but you wouldn't get the dosage. That's why they're, they're juiced. That's why they're concentrated. Now, you said arginine's fallen out of favor. Why Why is that? Okay, so, like, you're probably pretty aware of nitric oxide metabolism. You can't just consume nitric oxide. Nitrite, nitrate, like, immediately, like, you're toast, right? So then the argument is, oh, can, can we go back up the chain? Like, can we go up to arginine? Can we go back up the thing? And so the first stop on that train was arginine. Uh, And then the issue you're going to fall out there, which is almost always the case with supplementation, was bioavailability. Like, how can we just get enough of it? And that one just seemed to fail. uh, Well, just it seemed to get better once we started going there. And then there's other concerns, uh, cold sores and things like that that started popping up that people were, like, not super stoked about. And so citrulline seems to be the better approach okay. to that right now. That's the short version. Okay. Got it.